too. I got to tell you about something that happened to me. So um, with him, and I'm sure these sorts of things happen to you also because we're walking with Jesus. God has a way of putting people in our path, not only the, that minister to us, but we get to minister to them. So um, you may or may not realize, but Oregon, uh, the Northwest is one of the most unchurched regions in, in the United States, especially Oregon and Washington. Especially Oregon, it's hit strong. There are, but there's actually more church buildings than, than anything else, but most of them are empty, all right? And the other thing that happens is, especially after this pandemic, people quit, pastors quit, give up. Just some awful things have happened. Well, anyway, so we got a new church coming to town. And so they're, 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 they're moved to Oregon City, and they started a home group in their home, and they're going to plant a church once their home group grows a little bit bigger. But they're still not there yet. They're not ready to plant. And uh, young guy, and he reminded me so much of me <laughs> and Cindy. Uh, young guy, when I was young in the ministry also, in my 20s, and, uh, and he has two kids like we did, and they're both young right now. And uh, we, just went, we just went for coffee. And again, it just felt so good to be able to encourage someone to be bold enough <laughs> to step out and plant a church. Because I really do believe that, especially here in America, in this season that we're in, the best way to get salvations done is through the local church. And there's something about a fresh startup where there's new excitement and people come. And so there's plenty, you know, he told me he's been to some areas and some pastors are a little bit territorial, you know. But he said, it's so different in Oregon City. And I said, yes, it is, because we all have this vision for Oregon City to be saved. We have this, and there is lots of room for lots of churches and lots of believers. And so, and everyone has a little bit, I like to call them flavor, you know I mean? I don't know much about his background, uh, but, but it's like he loves Jesus, he loves the Lord, and he's committed to what he do, what does. So I just encourage you, every time God puts someone around you that has like-minded, just know it's him. I mean, just be able to share that and be a part of that. That was pretty exciting. And so, uh, again, that's how exciting uh, my weeks are with Jesus, because he's always got something going on. All right, so today we're going con- to continue this series um, about truth. Because there's something out there, and I know it's not just me. I mean, I know you all see it, you know, but it's just... Talk about a season or a time when it is difficult for us to trust. We can't trust the media. It's fake news. You can't trust sometimes our government, sometimes even situations of like, that's not what happened. That's not the truth. And there's this, there's this situation going on where, where um, it's just downright demonic. And, uh, and it just causes confusion. And, and I just... I thought, boy, I could get up here and gripe about it because I love to gripe. Do you guys like to gripe? I mean, I love to gripe. And I don't know all the answers out there, but I do know the answer. And the position we all need to do is a position of truth, and it's all based on our faith in God. And so over this series, over the next five weeks, well, just four now, so, so, so we're going to have several things we're going to talk about, it, but it's based on 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 15. So it says this. Yet you must continue to advance in strength. First of all, I like that. Sometimes, like I say, I, I just sensed even during, during worship, it's just like, because I felt such a refreshing, and, and that Psalm 103 came to my mind. It's like, man, God, you just bring us the strength that we need. We're not going to get, we are, we're, we, you give us that strength. We must continue to advance in strength with the what? Truth wrapped around your heart. Because I tell you, our hearts are fickle things. Our hearts will shift, if, whether it's raining, somebody looks at us funny or whatever. So we got to keep wrapping the word, because our, our heart really does, in a way, guide us. I mean, it really does, you know. And the world just says, you know, follow your heart. Don't do that. Don't follow. No, no, because you follow the truth, okay? And keep wrapping it, because your, your heart's going to lead you. Keep wrapping the truth around your heart. And so that just really stuck with me. Being assured by God that he's the one, capital Oh, one, Jesus, God, who is that truly taught you all these things? Verse 15, remember what you were taught from your childhood. This is why children's ministry is the most important part of a church. It's the most important part of Summer Blast, the fact that you get people in at a young age. We all get kind of, I don't want to put a little... uh, in our teenage years, we get a little bit, and our young adult years, we start 
but we all remember the word put in our heart. And, and God knows that, and he understands that. And it's so important with young people that we do that. Pastor Cindy and I have based our whole ministry on young people all these years. Um, and I'm glad you're here, but we're here for the kids. So anyway, okay. Uh, remember, you were taught from your childhood from the Holy Scrolls, which can impart to you wisdom to experience everlasting life through faith of Jesus, the anointed one. Like I said, there's just all kinds of things being taught out there, a lot of mistruths, and, and um, we just got to stand up for the truth about our faith, amen? We need to do that. So over the next few weeks, we'll continue to do this. You'll see on this next slide, there's five topics over the next five weeks. Last week was the truth about God, where we kind of, I broke it down into three parts, where he teaches us through his word, that he's one God in three persons, Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And that God's will is for you is always healthy. It's always good. It's always moving forward. And the way we did this is I gave you these handy-dandy guides. And if you're like me, then like big print, I have big print ones, right, back there. Or if you brought it from last week, um, I have these small ones that will fit in your Bible or your hand. And this is our statement of faith. And this is all the Word of God. These are statements of truth that you can rely on. And so as we go through the each of these topics, the truth about God, I pulled certain statements of faith out of there. Today we're talking about the truth about Jesus, right? And so I pulled out, I talked about, pull out some different statements in there, and then the next week will be truth about you and me, and we're going to pull out some statements out of there in that. So anyway, we're on the truth about Jesus, and before we go any further, can we just start with one scripture? In fact, I mentioned it to somebody this morning, and they just automatically said it, and they didn't know, hey, that's my first scripture. Uh, because I say we're talking about the truth of Jesus, and it's Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, we could just preach that one right there. I mean, it, it, it's amazing when you think, at least the way I think, about things that, something that consistent, that the Word of God could boldly say, no matter what the culture is, no matter what the environment is, no matter how high gas prices are, what employment is like, inflation is like, shrink shrinkflation, shrinkflation, it hit our toilet paper rolls here too. Gwen, yeah, Gwen sent me a picture, I think Zena saw them, that the ones we bought before, they were bigger, and now they're smaller. It's crazy what's going on out there. But you know what, and I kind of laugh about that kind of stuff, because things are constantly changing, but God never changed. He's always, always the same. So thinking about that, this is where my mind went. Um, I, I, I love my, I have an iPhone, and, and I love my iPhone. I'm so proud of Pastor Dan. He has an iPhone now, too. I'm just so, I've been working on him for years, you know. And uh, again, and like I said, they got us. I mean, once you get hooked on them, it's, 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 it's an addictive drug. It is. And so I'll just admit it to you. You know, you just get used to it. And, but I tell you, 60 years ago, 60 plus, when I was a little one, I never thought phones would be where they are today. I mean, so, so here's a picture. This is similar to my first phone, all right? So this first picture up there, okay, we had these. First of all, they were only one color, all right? They were only black, the original. I'm, I'm talking way back. Houses were actually built with little, little, little cubby holes in there, usually in a hallway. Ours was kind of more to the front or the side of the house between the kitchen and the living room, and there was a cutout, and there was this black old phone. And it did not have a plug. You didn't plug it in and out. It was hardwired in, all right? I mean, it was just like, and you didn't take the phone with you. You went to the phone. I mean, that's just, that was just the way life was. And it was the most remarkable thing because, you know, you could, we had a party line. You could listen to your neighbor, and they didn't know it, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, and everything was long distance for us. We were out in the sticks, and there were only like 500 people on our exchange. And so, you know, you, you, everything was long distance when you called. And so you didn't talk a lot on the phone unless it was serious business. Okay, so then something comes out in the, I don't know what year. This next picture shows a couple examples, but those are the days you actually dialed the phone, all right? You actually, you actually, dial, yeah, that's, we st I still, yeah, I dialed the phone, all right? You dialed, so on the next picture you can see there, they came out with some new things, all right? 
the one on the left, it was a wall, it would go on the wall, all right? And that cord you see that's kind of pulled, that's because you would take the phone and walk around. They were, again, they, phones kept changing. They just stretch and stretch and stretch. And they had push buttons. And you usually had to pay extra for the push buttons instead of the dial. I think that pink one is called like a princess phone. I mean, that's when they first started having phones with jacks. And you, you, you start having them in your bedroom. And, and so you didn't have to get out in the middle of the night. And the teenagers could go in there and talk to all their friends. And again, it just, we just got used to this change. And then lo and behold, something else happens, right? And so this next slide shows the, the introduction of the cell phone, all right? Now the one on, on the, the left there is an earlier one, not the earliest. We had one of those bricks, the real early ones. But the phones keep changing. And the earlier phones like that, all you really did with them was talk. That's really all you did. <laughs> you just talk. If you got real smart, you learned how to text using the little but they charge you for it. I mean, they used to charge you for that stuff, you know, and so, and they'd like a nickel every time it bounced off a tower or something, I don't know. And so, and they were only just a few styles, and you just kind of learned that. And then the smartphone came about, and I, again, I just, there's, I don't even, I don't know if that's the latest one, but the smartphones have changed so much. And the last thing I do on mine is talk. You know, you just, you do, you do it for everything else. You, you check your calendar, it's your calculator, it's your camera. Pastor Dan was telling me earlier today, you can't even buy cameras anymore. Unless you get them on eBay or behind, it's just these have taken over. Everyone, everyone uses their cell phone for a camera. And, and again, it's, it's not the fact that it's good or bad. What I'm saying is we're so used to everything changing, right? I mean, everything. Our computers, you know, when they first came out with Windows or first came out with, you know, PCs or Macs, they were just totally different. And, and they change over time. Everybody knows you buy them and then a year or two you're outdated and new stuff comes along. And so it's kind of in our normalcy to expect things to constantly change. So what for us to teach, especially young people, and sometimes ourselves, the fact there is one thing <laughs> that never changes. And that's Jesus. Now, to most of us, and probably to most of you in this room, that brings us comfort. It's like, thank you, Lord. I can rely on you. Think of all those people out there. Don't even think about the fact they're unsaved. Think about the fact that they have nothing to hang on to. They have, no, they have no point to say, no matter what, I can come back here and it's good. You know, it's just because everything out there, you don't know if the next wildfire is going to take you out or the next, you know, you just, you just don't know what's going on out there. It's crazy. So number one, let's talk specifically about Jesus. And this is, I, I want us to be able to relate to this. Jesus is God, the Son. Remember we talked about God last week, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. This is so timely we're talking about father-son or father-parent relationships. Jesus is God, the Son. Always was, always will be. Well, how can he be that? Because... A son is someone born after the father. How can, didn't Jesus come later? No, not according to the word. Always was, always will be. He was born on the earth, but he existed before that also. So we'll get into that in just a second. So if you have your booklet, you can do it, or turn in it, or you can look later. I've also got it on the screen behind me. But so let's look what our statement of faith says about Jesus Christ. Let's be grounded in the fact that we know what the word of God says. Jesus Christ, go ahead there, that next slide. Jesus Christ is God the Son. The second person of the Trinity, on earth, Jesus was, get this, 100% God and 100% man. He was the only man who ever lived a sinless life. Hmm. He was born of a virgin, performed miracles, died on the cross for mankind, and thus atoned for our sins through the shedding of his blood. He rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures ascended to the right hand of the Father and will return again in power and glory. So if anybody says, what do you believe about Jesus? Well, you can pull this out. This is what the Word of God teaches us. This is what we believe. 100% God. 100% man. The Gospel of John also helps us understand the sameness of God and Jesus by relating Jesus to the Bible. It starts out with this in John 1.1. In the beginning... The word already existed. Yeah, this is deep stuff, but it's good stuff. The word was with God. The word, not this printed edition, but the word that's written in here, 
was God. So the Word was God, existed with him, and then as you read through that chapter, move down to about uh, verse 14, the Word, this stuff, not the actual physical Bible, but the Word, the living Word of God, became human, made his home among us, He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. That's what we were singing about while we worshiped. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Jesus is the Son of God. It's also interesting to fact that the way, because this all was prophesied in Scripture, but you can look also there on page 3, talks about his virgin birth. Page 3 says this, Jesus Christ was conceived by God the Father, through the Holy Spirit, right? The third person of the Trinity, Father, remember I taught God the Father, one, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All equal, all the same, but the... In the Virgin Mary's womb, therefore, he is the Son of God. Matthew 1.18 says this, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before the marriage took place, while he was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a miraculous work of God to move the living word, Jesus, into Mary's womb and take on a human form so we could understand and relate like never before. So people say, what is all this Jesus stuff? What is all this Jesus stuff? It's so we can relate. God did this on purpose so we would understand it had to be miraculously done so no person could make it up or or pretend it happened. It's all miraculously backed up by Scripture. So Jesus is God the Son, miraculously placed amongst us in human form. And number two, Jesus is yours and mine. He's, He's our Redeemer. He's our Redeemer. All right? Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. What, what do you mean by that, Pastor? What do you mean by redeem? Well, whenever I want to look up a word and get the godly understanding behind it, I go to my Webster's online, 1828 Dictionary, because it's so awesome, because when you look up these words, they'll usually give you biblical reference. Noah Webster was a believer, and he would connect it to the Bible. But this is what it means to redeem, all right? To redeem is to purchase back. Jesus is my Redeemer. He purchased me back. To ransom, he gave himself for me. To liberate or rescue me from captivity, that's what my Jesus does for me. Or bondage, any obligation or liability to suffer or to be forfeited. By paying an equivalent, that is, he paid a price for us. To redeem prisoners like us. Capture goods, redeem a pledge. So that's the definition of a redeemer. You know, it's Father's Day. Of course, you know this. And Burgerville, they always give out Father's Day milkshakes. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they do. But you got to redeem them. They're not just, you can't just go up to the window and say, hey, I'm a dad. Give me a milkshake. Well, maybe they'd make it work. I don't know. But I'm just, what they do is, is uh, there's a picture up here that'll show you. I got this email to remind me, because I'm a loyal Burgerville customer, all right? And the father year is, and a big shout out to the fathers, and the father figures who help raise us. And then it says on there, you have both today and tomorrow? Right, yesterday yesterday and today, all right? Uh, On June 18th and 9th, get a free 12-ounce chocolate shake in dairy, whatever that means, or bliss, bliss shake. Now, the thing of it is, to get this, you use the app, all right? That's what you use these cell phones for. You use the app, and you key it in there, and, and it t- explains it all in the email. And then when you, when you pay for it, it's on at the beginning, but then there's a credit at the end that pulls it off. You actually redeem the value of that free shake by surrendering. You, we used to use coupons, but nobody hardly uses those anymore. It's all on your phone, you know. It, but, but you surrender that, and in, in exchange... You don't got to come up with the $6.39 or whatever silly price those things are, right? It's done for you. That's what Jesus did to redeem our salvation. He paid the price. You don't have to have an app. You just freely, <laughs> you just receive Jesus, and you're, you're, you're app ready. I mean, you're ready after that, all right? And, 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 and you can rejoice in that. But uh, anyway, I, like I said, that's just a couple screenshots from my phone because I wanted to show that because 
because I am free of the debt of buying that shake. Right? I'm free of the debt. Jesus plays a most important role, I believe, in all believers' lives. And here's the explanation of redemption. Turn in page four in your little booklet or look in the screen behind me. Redemption is this. Man was created good and upright. I love that thing. You know, the, he's such a good man. That's such a good person. Well, originally, that's how we were created back with Adam and Eve, all right? The first two. We were created in that, but by voluntary transgression, he fell. His only hope of redemption is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Man was created good. We were. God's intention, the Garden of Eden, it was good. Remember? Uh, he made the mankind, it was good. He made the animals, it was good. And then they and all mankind fell. But not to worry, because God had a redemption plan in place. Romans 5, verse 12 says this. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. So that very first sin opened the door for this. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. Well, you could say, I wasn't there. Why do I get? The Bible says it went to everybody. He just opened the door for it. It went to all future people being born. Verse 21, jump down there. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. So the truth of the matter is, this next film is Jesus, he is the way. Our redemption card is Jesus. God made it so simple. He doesn't add to it. He doesn't have to worry about your app not working. You don't have to do There's nothing connected to salvation except you saying, Jesus, I receive you. It's not based on good works. It's not based on your past. It's based on you and him. Back to our milkshake example. Suppose I had robbed the Oregon City Burgerville. I didn't. But suppose I did, right? And so, so I, let's say they had, I don't know, that hardly anybody uses cash, but let's just say they had 500 bucks in their till. And so I get that $500, and, and I go out, and I take it and do whatever I want with it. I really owe Burgerville that $500 plus more restitution for the fear and everything I did and put on them. But when I use that app, it doesn't take into account that I owe them a debt. I just present the app. It says, I get a free milkshake, and they say, yes, you do, sir. See, that's, that's, and that's, that's kind of a funny thing, but that's how it is with Jesus. Some people think, well, because I had such a bad past, I had such a, you know, I'm, I'm really not, you know, I'm just scum. I'm really not, you know, I have all these bad thoughts, and Jesus says, he washes all that. It's not about your past, right? He wants to cover your past. You just surrender that to him so he can cover it. It's about what he wants to do you today and how you lead others to the Lord. That's what it's all about. It doesn't matter about your past. There's no sin so great he won't forgive. But we do need to ask for forgiveness. As he said in John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to me except through, nobody comes to the Father except through me. You can't be a good person. You can't get good enough. You can't, because there's nothing you can do except. That's why God didn't want to complicate. It's just, just accept my son Jesus. That's all you do. And then from that point forward, I'll direct you, I'll guide you, and when you make a mistake, I'll cover it. Accept Jesus. He alone is our redemption. He is the way. And number three, this is the final point, and I think it's so important, we'll break it down quickly in two minutes or less, or a few minutes more. Jesus is where I'm rooted. I love this term. Faith, I'm, again, I'm trying to give us real things to help us understand I mean, I want us to be able to quote scripture. I want us to be able to say who Jesus But when people ask you, what does it mean that you follow Jesus? You, you can easily, man, I'm rooted in him. I'm root, and think about a plant and how, the, how, its, how its roots are in the ground. I am rooted. It's where I'm rooted. Colossians 2, verses 6 to 7. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Verse 7, let your roots grow down into him. All right? We planted our tomatoes. We planted our peas, all right? And those roots, are, are, they're just taking all the nutrients out of the ground. And we've got a bunch of pea pods. And now I've got blossoms on, on the tomato plants. They're blossoming. They're growing because they're rooted in that fertile so soil below. You and I as believers, we want to be rooted in Jesus. Let your lives be built on him. Let, then your faith 
will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Let's be rooted in all we do for Jesus. That's why all our worship songs are around Jesus. That's why everything we do is around Jesus. Everything rooted in him. So I got three points here. First of all, just to help us understand what it means to be rooted, number one, the first little indentation is he understands. Just know this. Our Jesus, he understands. He came to live on earth, not just die. We're grateful because he had to do that to fulfill the prophecy, but he came to live, he came to live here on earth. It was his mission. So he could identify with us. He felt pain, he felt sorrow, he felt, and those things are expressed in the word of God. Hebrews 4, verses 5, 15 and 16. The high priest, that's Jesus, of ours understands. There's nothing we can go through that he doesn't already have gone through it. He, does, he understands. He understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, but he didn't sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So he understands. And here's something else really cool about Jesus. We want to be rooted in, in him because he also intercedes for us. He intercedes. He's like an attorney. He's like, a, he's like a mediator. He's the one that in between you and the judge that's, that's pleading for your case. He's rooting for you. He's on your side. Romans 8, 34 says, then, Who then is this one who condemns no one? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Picture him. I mean, I picture Jesus sitting right there by the Father talking about me. He's talking about you. Oh, Brooke, I've been watching Brooke for years, and, and, and God, thank you for making a way for her because I'm, I'm there for her. And then when he's talking about me, he's like, oh, oh, you know, he gets frustrated sometimes, and he makes these mistakes, but Jesus, he's just saying, but just the grace of God comes upon Jerry, and, and he'll get a clean mind tomorrow, a clear mind tomorrow, and he'll, he'll move forward to whatever's holding him back. That's our Jesus. He's, he's like the champion rooting for us all the time. He is our intercessor. I think he loves telling the devil, you know, Jerry, he's a threat to you, devil. I think Jesus loves that. Because I am. And finally is this, and so are you. And I love this. This is just all-encompassing. He holds it all together. I mean, you, you remember that song? He's got the whole world. In his, I mean, you know, but it's scriptural. He, he is the one. He is the glue. He's the, we're not supposed to eat gluten, but he's the gluten in the dough, right? When you make the bread. He's the one that makes it all work together like it should. Jesus is holding it together. When you don't know what to pray, do what my wife does. I just hear her say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When things are really rough, I hear it more and more. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's nothing more complete. There's nothing, you know, it's, he holds it all together. He is the one. Colossians 1, 15 to 17. Again, I use the Message Bible, not necessarily to teach from, but it's a good way. It's just described very well. It says this. We look at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. See, we actually have a reflection of Jesus through his word, through his dying on the cross. We look at the sun. God's original purpose in everything created, for everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels. He goes, everything got started in him and finds his purpose in him. And on the next slide, he was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, that's you and I. It's not just Connection Church. It's followers of God, the church. He, he organizes. None of you are here by accident. Our pastors and leaders, every person here, none of, he's been organizing. He's been watching out for you. He's been interceding along the way, making sure you're where you're supposed to be to complete his purposes. He organized and holds all that together too. Like a head does a body. The Son, Jesus, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He holds it all together. Won't you let him hold it all together with you? 
let's just take a moment and pray before we break up. And let me just kind of speak over you and, and see if this kind of resonates with you. Again, we talked about the truth of God last week. God is with us. God wants the best for us. God's got plans for us. And today we talked about the truth of Jesus and who he is. And but I want to get real practical. You don't have to admit it to me, but I ask you to admit it to the Lord. Is, your, is there an area in your life at this moment that feels like it's falling apart? Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your relationships with your family or friends or spouse. Maybe it's your work. Maybe it's something in your community. There's just so, it's just, I can't fix it, God, I need you. Jesus says, I want to hold it all together for you. As I pray over you, would you just let the Holy Spirit minister to you? And don't you try and hold it together. But just really release that so God can hold it together. Father, I'm with these beautiful people that you've created in your image, Father. I'm with these people today in their areas in our life. We just don't have it together. Emotionally, we're not right. Physically, we're not right. And maybe for some of us, spiritually, we're not right. Lord, we, we give that all to you. If there's things in our lives that just seem to be going crazy and it's hard to focus or my finances are out of control or my emotions are all upset or you know what that is for you. Just surrender that like I'm doing now to him. Just Jesus, take these things. You take all the pieces, Lord. You are Jesus. You've been interceding for us. You've been pleading for us. You're helping us hold it all together. Father, we thank you that, that your, your yoke, Lord, is light. You're the one that holds things together. Thank you, Lord, for understanding and interceding for us. We're rooted in you, Jesus. We're rooted in you. Now, before we close, there could be some that haven't taken that first step. And that first step is this. I really need Jesus in my life. Jesus, I need you to be a part of my life. I need you to just let all that stuff go. And if there's anybody in the room today who would say, you know, that's me. <laughs> I'm not living for Jesus like I should, or I once did and I walked away, and I'm saying from this point forward, I'm ready. I'm ready. Father, all over this room and people in the sound of my voice, Lord, we're ready to once again, or maybe for the first time, confess our love for you, our belief in you, the one who holds it all together, the one we're rooted in. Lord, we declare with our mouths, Lord, that we are rooted in you. Why don't you all stand with me? Let's do this declaration together. It's a short one. It starts out like this. Say it with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you from the dead. I want to sh know you and live for you. Forgive me for not trusting and not living for you. Forgive me for all my sins. Say it loud. I receive your forgiveness now. Come into my heart and change me. Be my Lord. Everything I have is yours. I trust you completely. I commit to you 100%. In Jesus' name, amen. Because it's all about Jesus, right? Everything. That's who we believe. That's what we stand for. That is the awesomeness of God. If you made that confession for the first time or you, or you just felt a strong presence of him, just mark on that card so we can be praying with you. Um, if you have an offering for us today, I'll pray over your, our offerings. I just put it in the, in the black box back there. But also, it looks like we got Lindsay and Vicki over there. Any prayer needs you have, of course, fill out the cards. Of course, get that information. But during our last song, they would love to pray for you. Tell them exactly what you have need of. Let them pray over you. So, fathers, as we go today, go ahead. Worship team, come on up. 
Father, as we go today, Father God, we're going to go out in song, but Lord, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gifts and callings you put in every person represented here. Lord, we thank you for the financial blessings they are to this church. It's because of the people you're blessing we are able to bless these dads today. Father, it's because of the people you're blessing we're able to put money into missions and get the gospel out around the world and locally. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for watching over people's jobs, watching over people's finances, Lord, helping us to be good stewards as we follow only you. You, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go out and have the best Sunday ever, but first, we're going to go out worshiping together. Here we go. Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has the great name. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have been faithful forevermore. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. I know you will do it again, for your promise is yes and amen, you have done great things, God you do great things, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things hallelujah god above it all hallelujah god unshakable hallelujah you have done great things God above it all, hallelujah, God unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, you break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things, you have great things, oh God, you do great things. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful Father's Day, all you fathers. God bless.